said you had some new stuff on, on AliExpress or something. So yeah, got this really cheap chain on, on AliExpress. Super lightweight. Oh, nice one. Uh, yeah, been riding it the last few weeks. Seems pretty decent. So what's it made out of? Is it going to be durable? Uh, to be honest, I don't actually know. But I've got the chain wear tool here. So why don't I stick it on the chain and have a look quickly? Oh, shit. Right, so we got Sirocco back as a sponsor, which is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> and Sirocco make all sorts of cycle kits, so jerseys, bib shorts, glasses, um, and it's all really well made for a decent price as well, if you ask me. Uh, but today I thought I'd take a few seconds to kind of demonstrate the quality of some of their gear. So this is one of their M2 jerseys, kind of for everyday cycling, really nice material, super comfy, and it's got a nice bit of stretch to it. Plus, it looks really nice on, and I quite like the kind of minimal branding on this design as well myself. Now, the rubber grips as well, all around the bottom, which hopefully you can uh, see there, also help keep it nice and secure while you're out on the bike. Right on the back, you've got three pockets, pretty, pretty deep as well to hold all your stuff, and a separate zip pocket here, for your, for your money or your car keys or whatever. Plus, this back panel is made of this lighter mesh fabric to help keep you cool while you're out riding. Now, if you wanted something a bit more premium, they have their SRX jerseys. This is a, a long sleeve version. Kind of more race inspired, but the quality is still there. They have a really nice fit, kind of minimal design, nice and lightweight. Plus, it looks really great on as well, if you ask me. So yeah, if you fancy checking out some of the gear that Sirocco's got to offer, then use my link in the uh, description below and that'll get you an extra 10% off your order. And it'll also help me out a little bit as well, which is cool. Uh, anyway, enough of that and let's crack on with the rest of the episode. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome back to another bodacious um, Trace Fellow <laughs> production. My name, as always, is Luke. Now, dropping weight from your bike, a more noble course of action there is not. As the grams are shed, the weight of past transgressions lifted from your body. Uh, well, uh, maybe not, but it, it keeps me keeps me out of trouble. Uh, <laughs> anyway, the big ticket items in this department are obviously frame, wheels, group set, maybe uh, handlebars and saddle. But an often overlooked component is the humble chain rooney over here. Now to, uh, to a lot of you out there, a chain is, is just a chain. However, um, yeah, with the right choice, you can save a few grams in, the, in this area. Uh, now, before we, before we dive, dive straight in, it's probably worth pointing out that if you run a SRAM or a Shimano group set, then chains between those two manufacturers are pretty much cross compatible. However, if you run Campagnolo, congratulations, you're obviously very wealthy. And <laughs> no, but um, basically Campag can be a little bit finicky and the cog spacing is slightly different. And, and while I found slightly differing opinions online, I think best practice dictates if you run Campag components on your drivetrain, get yourself a Campag compatible chain. Um, anyway, all that aside, let's dive in. Right, so on my 11 speed setups, I've always used SRAM PC1130 chains or SRAM PC1110 uh, chains. Now they're super, super cheap, nice and durable, and they shift really nicely as well in my experience, but they're not the lightest things out there. Now this is a picture of a, of a regular chain and when manufacturers want to lighten it, they can generally do two things, punch out slots in the plates of the chain and use hollow pins to hold those, uh, hold those plates together, which you can see here. Now, among other things, swapping to a lightweight chain can save you about 30 grams from the weight of your bike. <laughs> However, these lightweight chains tend to cost a hell of a lot more than regular ones. So you can pick up a basic 11 speed SRAM chain for about 13 pounds. A KMC X11 chain with those slotted plates and hollow pins that I mentioned, 60 pounds, maybe, maybe a little bit more, so a lot more expensive. Um, however, 
I was on the old AliExpresso uh, a while back and I typed in 11 speed, 11 speed chains and this brand, VG Sports, showed up. Um, yeah, and I've seen it everywhere actually. And rather than 60 pounds, you can get a seemingly comparable chain with hollow pins and slotted plates. It's actually a few grams lighter than the KMC chain for 18 pounds. So, obviously, I bought one. Um, <laughs> I bought two, in fact, with my own money. Let it be known. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me show you what these things are like. Right, so while I'm uh, while I'm setting up here, if you if you're enjoying these videos, if you could subscribe and maybe hit the like button too, that'll be yeah, that'll be really really amazing. Helps keep the glorious YouTube algorithm uh, on my side. Um, anyway, enough of that, and let's crack on. Okay, so this here, this is a brand new VG Sports chain, literally just taken it out of the box here. Um, and yeah, this is the box you would have seen it at the beginning. So 11 speed row slash mountain bike VG Sports there, top performance ultra ultra light uh, yeah and there's a little quick release link at the back there if you need it now first impressions when you get it out of the box it actually looks really well made actually and there's a nice bit of factory lubrication on the chain which is cool difficult difficult to show you that but if i give you a little close-up here yeah it, it actually looks quite nice you can see the hollow pins and the slotted plates there of the chain and one of the things that i noticed as well when i first got my hands on it let me let me zoom out quickly is that there's not a massive amount of flex in the chain so it doesn't flex loads which kind of told me that the the pinning holding it together um seemed to be pretty decent so yeah a first glance at least seems to be well constructed now it's worth pointing out that I've actually checked this this new chain here with a with a chain wear gauge to see if this was kind of to spec from the factory. And I've got a cheap cheap gauge here from from eBay. And basically, if the gauge slips through the rollers, slips between the rollers there, it means the chain is pretty worn. Oh sh. So this cheap gauge from eBay cost a, cost a few quid, and it's got two levels of wear, one and 0 0.75. 0 0.75 being a, a lower degree of wear. So if I demonstrate quickly here, I'll pop this on the chain, pull that taut, and you can see it, it passes the test, basically. Passes the test there. And I've also got a slightly more premium um, <laughs> park tool chain wear gauge here. And this goes down to a lower degree of wear, actually. So we've got basically zero wear there under OK, 0.5 and 0.75 so uh yeah a little bit more sensitive here and if i show you it passes this test as well so i'll pop that on the back give it some tension and then yeah it doesn't pass through the link there and again well i've, I've tested basically a lot of the links here on the chain off camera and it, it it passes the test so basically from the factory the tolerances on this chain seem to be pretty good however <laughs> here here is my is my used chain, and let me let me zoom in. Now it, it looks a little crusty, which is to be expected, and, and, it, and it feels a bit crustier. However, let me explain. Well, let me show you the main difference between this used chain and and this new chain here. So in this clip, we have the brand new chain on top and the used one on the bottom. Now both chains started out exactly the same length, so the same number of links. But you can see as we get to the end, the used chain on the bottom is nearly one whole link longer so it's it's really really stretched out now chains do wear out but any guesses on how many miles are on this used chain right here leave your guesses in the comments below no so um 716 miles or just over 1150 kilometers so so just for context this is not a lot like <laughs> at all now my chains usually last me 2,000 miles, maybe two and a half thousand with, with regular cleaning. But after just over 700 miles, this chain here, it is completely, and I mean completely, knackered. It's, it's, it's gone. Now, it's not like just over the limit. It, it fails the advanced wear gauge on every single link. So um, yeah, you can see here, this is the most advanced wear I've got there. This uh, this one, one degree of wear on this on this eBay gauge, and I'll just pick a random link here. There we go, woof, that's gone. Let's choose another random link. There we go, and pop, 
fails that test as well. So, I mean, you can see this chain is completely, completely worn out. Not only this, but all the pinning holding the kind of plates together, that's completely worn out as well. So I can kind of flex the chain loads and I can flex it laterally like this, basically into a complete circle. So you can see in this clip here, yeah, it bends all the way around. And just for context, the chain on top is a SRAM chain with a similar amount of mileage on it. So yeah, after, after what I would consider very low mileage, the chain was completely toast. It was, yeah, it was gone. Um, and it's worth pointing out that all the time I had it on the bike, I was very diligent with keeping it clean, as, as I always am. I use an ultrasonic cleaner to make sure my chains are, are sparkling clean most of the time. Um, but still, it wore out really fast. It wore out so fast, in fact, that I never even thought to check it. The first thing that I noticed was actually the shifting at the back was getting pretty dreadful. So I checked the normal things and then just happened to check the chain wear and woof, the, <laughs> the chain, yeah, it was gone. In fact, had I have checked it earlier, I probably would have had this chain off the bike and in the bin around 450, 500 miles, something like that. Um, yeah, now I'm not too bothered about the chain itself. I don't, I don't really care about that. The thing which really annoyed me was the fact that it completely ruined my cassette as well. Now, as a chain wears out, the distance between each link is gonna increase slightly. Generally, it's the rollers and the pins inside the kind of chain. It's generally those that wear out. But in extreme cases, like this uh, VG Sports chain here, the, the chain can end up noticeably longer than a fresh chain and, and kind of stretch, as I, as I demonstrated earlier. Now, as this is happening, it also wears out and increases the gap between the teeth on your cassette at the back. I mean, you can imagine that if the distance between each link is, is increased ever so slightly, as the chain is spinning around, it's gonna wear out this gully between the teeth here, essentially making the te these teeth slightly more pointed, kind of in well, increasing the distance between each tooth. Now, it really affects the cassette at the back, but to a lesser extent, this will also have an effect on the teeth of your chain rings as well. So if left unchecked and your chain gets really worn out like this one here, the first thing you'll probably notice is noise from your drivetrain will, uh, will generally increase and your shifting will get noticeably worse. But if, if you keep leaving it or, or maybe it <laughs> wears out so quick that you don't catch it in time, like, <laughs> like this one, um, yeah, it will wear out your cassette to such an extent that when you come to fit a new chain, the tighter tolerances of, of that new chain won't mesh properly with the worn profile of the, of the cassette teeth. Um, yeah, and it could get to a point where when you put the power down, the chain can literally jump over teeth on, on the cassette. Not good at all and can actually be quite dangerous. I mean, you can imagine if you're kind of grinding up a hill and you go for a, a power stroke on the pedal and really put your, put your power through it, and then the chain just decides to skip over, say, five teeth or whatever. Um, yeah, that could throw you off the bike. Yeah, not, not ideal, to say the least. Now, a full steel cassette, a bit like this one here, will usually last me five to 6,000 miles or around three regular chain replacements. Now, as it happens, when I fitted this VG Sports chain here, I also slapped on a brand new, one of these hybrid cassettes. So uh, yeah, hopefully you can see sprockets one to four, they're all milled from a single block or billet of aluminium and it's kind of CNC'd to, uh, to save a little bit of weight. And then the sprockets seven to 11, those are, those are your regular steel ones. Now, I'll be doing a whole video on these type of cassettes in an upcoming episode, so get subscribed so you don't miss that. But basically, I usually get around 1,800 miles out of, these, uh, out of these type of cassettes. Now, needless to say, with this chain here, after 700 miles, both the chain and this cassette, which was brand new, um, as, I, as I mentioned, were completely toast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really annoying, to say the least. Now, one thing that I realized while uh, researching this episode is the fact that the reviews for these VG Sports chains on AliExpress are glowing. I mean, four and a half stars and up with thousands of reviews, basically. Um, and I think the reason for that is that AliExpress asks you to review the product as soon as you receive it. And as, as, I, as I kind of demonstrated, it looks good when you first get it out of the box and it works well for about two, 300 miles. Um, however, 
if you dig a little bit deeper and do a little bit of sleuthing, uh, yeah, there are a fair few reviews which kind of mirror what I found out here. Okay, so we're on AliExpress here, and as mentioned, the vast majority of these listings for VG Sports chains on AliExpress have, have glowing reviews, and this one is a perfect example. 304 orders, the, the vast majority of the reviews here, 87% of them give this five stars. So I can see a lot of people assuming that these chains here are gonna be good quality, and I was definitely one of, one of those people. But let's have a look at some of these reviews here. So if I scroll down, um, this review here, after a thousand kilometers of use, the chain is totally elongated by four links. It's bull um, yeah, um, yeah, basically completely follows uh, what I found. So uh, let's, let's check out another review here. Again, this is a different listing for VG Sports Chains, but as you can see, after 39 reviews, 86 orders, 4.8 stars. Again, the vast majority are five star reviews. So let's check, let's check the, uh, the actual reviews down here. Now this is in Polish, but don't worry, I've already, I've already prepared. Um, yeah, so that means the chain must be replaced after 300 kilometers. So a little bit sooner than, than I experienced, but again, you can see a pattern here. These chains don't last very long. Uh, another listing here, uh, again, looks like shining reviews. So 4.6 stars, the vast majority of five star reviews. Scroll down to the, uh, to the review here. The chain fits my 11 speed setup, but the wear is too high. Used the chain on my gravel bike for less than 600 kilometers, and now the wear measurement tool fell down to 0.75. So basically follows it to the T what I've experienced. And again, the original Shimano chain needed 1700 kilometers for this, and the KMC chain that he's used in the past, two and a half thousand kilometers. So basically exactly follows what I found with these chains. Let's check out one more review here. So this is uh, for VG Sports again. This is for their 12 speed chains, but you know, again, great reviews after a number of orders, five stars, five star reviews all round basically. But again, let's quickly check the, uh, the reviews here. So the chain is worn or stretched after about 200 kilometers and makes a lot of noise. As I mentioned, when these chains stretch out, one of the first things you'll notice is that they make a lot of noise when, when changing gears. So hopefully what I've demonstrated is that with AliExpress, I often take these reviews here with a little pinch of salt. If I'm looking at a particular product and I'm a little bit skeptical that these are too good to be true, what I'll tend to do is find a, a listing with a, a large number of orders, so 138 orders is quite a large number, and then specifically go and read the reviews. And people that leave additional feedback, as in this person here, that will often tell you a, a little bit more about the product. So yeah, hopefully I've demonstrated that, at least in this case, these particular uh, listings for these Fuji Sports chains, the reviews not really to be trusted, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, overall, not a great result for these uh, for these VG sports chains, it's, uh, it's gotta be said. Um, but that's kind of par for the course with a lot of these cheaper bike parts. You do kind of take a little bit of a risk and you have to keep, you have to keep an eye on them at the end of the day. Now, a couple of things uh, be before you go. The first is that I am not a kind of wattage demon. Uh, <laughs> I am not an Olympic track sprinter or something like that, putting like galactic levels of power through my, through my drivetrain. I am quite a skinny English bloke that cycles from cafe to cafe, potentially indulging in a latte and a millionaire shortbread. Uh, yeah, I think if you actually put any significant wattage through one of these chains, it might actually snap entirely. I, I, I suspect that might be the case. Um, number two, get yourself a chain wear gauge. It doesn't need to be one of the fancy park tool ones. If you get one of those eBay ones that I showed, they cost about three, four pounds, and they are totally fine. Just check your chain every couple of weeks, and if it fails the 0.75 kind of wear level, just throw it away and get yourself a new chain. They're not very expensive, and it will mean that your cassettes and chain rings last a hell of a lot longer. Um, and number three, the sample size for uh, for today's video, it's, it's, it's me. So there is the potential that I just got chains from a bad batch. It's difficult to say really on that front. However, in my opinion, yeah, steer, steer well clear of these, uh, of these crummy chains. Um, yeah. If this experience has taught me anything, it's the fact that a decent well-made chain from the likes of SRAM or Shimano, they're not particularly expensive at the end of the day, and they really help 
to bolster the lifespan of your other drivetrain components. Now, if you really want a lightweight chain, I don't think the cost benefit is worth it, in my opinion. But if you, if you, <laughs> yeah, if you really want one, then my advice, stick with the big boys and be prepared to kind of fork out a fair few quid for a, for a KMC chain or, or something like that. Now, a couple of manufacturers that I haven't checked out, SUMC um, seem to make uh, similar chains for a similar price. So I assume they're of a similar quality. Um, <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, so yeah, if you've used uh, SUMC chains, uh, let me know in the comments below. And YBN, I've heard good good things actually about YBN chains, but again, I've not used them myself. So if you've, uh, yeah, if you've had any experience with them, definitely leave me a comment. I'll be really interested to hear uh, your guys' opinion on it actually. Um, anywho, that is all that we've got time for in this, uh, in this little episode. So uh, yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode and uh, yeah if you have any questions or comments about this frankly terrible yeah terrible chain don't don't buy these um <laughs> or, or chains in general then yeah leave me a comment below and yeah maybe we can have a chat uh cool all right well that's it so i'll see you guys in uh, the next episode i guess all right see you later ciao ciao